The sparse vegetation and the lack of water mean that this region is totally inaccessible for most animals, and any that do stray too far into the desert are almost certain to die. Here, along the Namibian escarpment at the western edges of the desert, the climate improves and it occasionally rains. Herbivores can find pasture and there is always a pool somewhere where they can replenish their water reserves. The two basic necessities are met and so here, life has a chance. Most of the large herbivores of the African savannas can be found here. Some come in search of the grass that grows when there has been rain, and others, like the giraffe, prefer the young leaves on the trees. The fact that there is so much life here at the very edge of the desert may seem surprising and a sharp contrast to the barren, lifeless lands just 50 kilometers to the west. But the lack of water places strict limits on the majority of animals in the Namib. Some species, like the oryx, can remain for some time in the desert, surviving by licking the night dew and eating leaves and plants which contain water. But the majority would simply die if they penetrated far into the desert. Death also lies waiting at the other edge of the desert on the west coast. Bad weather, winds and the deceptive currents have, over the years, caused many shipwrecks along this coast. The sailors, drawing up their maps, recorded the fear this coast inspired. They named it the Skeleton Coast. Despite appearances, death is not the only visitor to this area of the Namib. These bodies are evidence that this is one of the many beaches along the coast of West Africa to which the fur seals come every year to give birth. There may be over one million seals along the coast as a whole. This concentration of valuable furs did not go unnoticed for long, and by the end of the 18th century, seal hunters were coming here regularly. Hunting has continued since then, but since 1991 has been strictly controlled by the Namibian government. Their problems with men do not end there. The enormous shoals of sardines have long been a valued prize. Traditional fishing methods were not a threat, but with the invention of factory ships, the seas have been overfished. These marine mammals cannot hope to compete. The males arrive in October to mark out their territories. A month later, the females join them and just a few weeks later give birth. In just two months, the water is full of seals. Seven days after giving birth, the females are again ready to mate. Once they have copulated, they swim into the deep waters where they remain for several days, feeding. During this time, the pups are left alone in the seal colony.
The reduction in the sardine population is starting to affect the seals. The mothers are able to obtain less food, so produce less milk, and many pups die of starvation. On land, the seals are very clumsy. As they adapted to life in the water, they lost mobility once out of it. So whenever there is danger, they plunge into the sea, the only place they feel safe. In an instant, the water is full of thousands of seals who have suddenly recovered the agility they lost when they came ashore. <laughs> 